so even though P1 abandoned me like a motherfucker, uh, <laughs> nah, he's got some shit to do. I'm still gonna train chest today and I'm still gonna train heavy. And the reason for this video is I keep getting messages in my inbox on Snapchat, Instagram, and that kind of thing asking how you can train heavy and still get progress even if you train by yourself. And if you guys know me from way back when, you've seen my old videos and stuff, I used to train by myself all the time. So there, there, there is the, the obvious of ask someone for help, but maybe if someone's not there. So what I've formulated and what this video is about is four tips, four tips I'm gonna give you that will help you to lift heavy, still lift heavy by yourself and make effective gains. Now the first tip is on your sets of working up to your heavier sets, and just in general for everything, work the negative. Everyone likes to just like, drop the bar down, bounce it. If, you're, if the weight's too heavy and you drop it fast, you can't, no one has that good a stretch reflex and that good control to be able to snatch it right at the bottom and then be able to control it, then push it back up. All that happens is you bottom out and you fuck yourself. So always control the negative. Understand that working the negative is gonna strengthen your lifts. Don't rush it. But also remember that lifting heavy doesn't mean going to your max. This doesn't mean, you know, 95, 100%. That's for when you need a spot up. But when you're training, progressive overload is key and working within a high percentage of your max is where we wanna be. So we're looking at like 80, 85%. Number three is know your limits and also make sure your bench form is right. There's a lot of people that, they, it's almost, when they're benching, it's almost like they're doing a guillotine press. So the flipping um, bar is like right by their neck. Don't want to be doing that. So if you haven't already seen it, go and check out my video on how to bench press safely. I'll also put a couple other videos in the description box of just me benching in general, talking about bench press form and make sure that your form is tight, your form is locked because yeah, otherwise you'll just decapitate yourself. And number four, we've all been there before. You know, you try to know your limits, but you go for that extra rep and it gets stuck and you don't know where to go and you've seen, yeah, you've seen the fail videos where they just, they, they do the complete wrong thing and they move it closer to their neck. Makes no damn sense. So I'm gonna show you now, 130 kilos on the bar. I was gonna do 140 but I'm not feeling 100% today. So um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to fail safely on a bench press. What you should do versus what you shouldn't do. So there, you move it away from your neck and it's almost like you're, almost like a tricep extension. It's a bit weird to explain, but you're moving it away from yourself to your hips. See, that way you can sit up. So then, even if you can't stand up with the weight and someone's around, they can come and help you. But sitting there waiting for someone to come in the hope that someone comes is a surefire way to just get stuck and then you start thinking recklessly. And all of this goes back to the other points of, if I make sure that I'm working within my max, so I'm not going for 100%, but I'm also working at an RPE of seven, and, seven or eight, so I've still got a couple reps left in the tank, and I'm not bombing the weight down, so I'm not like rapidly bringing it down, it bouncing off my chest and stuff, and I'm controlling that negative and working the negative, it makes that a lot easier, because then you can think with sense, because what, what happens is you go into a panic mode, and you just think recklessly, and when you think reckless, you think, I need to survive this. You're not thinking there is a logical way out of this. So putting yourself in a control position, when you do come to failure, keeps you in a control position. I come and go like a rah, rah, round. They don't want the to be going nah, nah, nah. I'm coming back with the money in the bag. The rule is in my lab, yeah, I'm running for the cash. I come and go like a rah, rah, round. Putting in the word like I'm way behind. Still trapping on the low. For life, was noticing all these frames got me trimming a knife. Always on some new thing, like riding the bike. It's two things in one setting. But I don't feel like selling for the time being. When I was young, I used to dream about the palm trees after the summer. Now, failing by yourself is like pulling off a plaster. Once you've done it once, it's fine. And there was something that um <laughs> I kind of already learned, but then Everall, the angry Russ, put it into words. He said, If you die, you die. And 
obviously you don't literally want to die but that's the mentality you need to kind of go into it as because otherwise you'll just hold yourself back all the time and then you find when you do rip off that psychological band-aid trust me it unlocks powers i'm talking like super saiyan powers because then you're not doubting yourself when you doubt yourself you cripple yourself so when i got to the gym today i wasn't really in the best of moods and i'll explain why so <laughs> I was. I had to force myself. I had to force myself to get myself in the right mood to make this video today because I, I knew that like it, it was flowing, but I didn't want my bad mood to come across in the video kind of thing. So I was fighting demons. But this morning, as you saw, just picked up my car from the MOT garage. But <laughs> this morning, bless Elijah. Like I'll, I'll never be angry with him for being a kid because that's what ki this is what kids do. They they run around, they make noise, all that kind of stuff. But I work from home so I'm trying to remember shit I'm trying to put shit on paper and I'm trying to you know do my because I like to do my um, to-do list like my schedule for the day in the morning but he had woken up earlier he's screaming and all this kind of stuff I'm just like oh man I can't even think then I take my pre-workout I'm like cool yeah time to hit the gym posted on snapchat what music i was listening to and all that kind of stuff and i was just like yeah yeah this is sick this is sick. i'm gonna i'm gonna smash this workout i'm gonna smash this video and you know it's gonna provide value people are gonna love it i was like positive why when i get a little bit up the road i'm like i need to drop my car off for the mot i was meant to drop it off at 8 30 it was now nine o'clock and i was just like oh sake and then i'm trying to calm down i'm just like just relax just get the video done you know you're in a good mood this and that so yeah it was had to battle some demons but it happens sometimes it happens sometimes like you're never gonna have a perfect day there'll always be something even if it's little but yeah i'll never i'll never blame elijah he's he's just he's being a kid but oh speaking of kids and elijah and stuff i wanted to involve elijah in the videos a little bit more because his character is, is just insane but i wanted to think of something that people could take away if you get what I'm saying. So came up with a series called Dad Life. I'll just play the little trailer that I made for it. What's going on guys and girls? I'd like to introduce you to a 12 part series called Dad Life. Now fitness is my passion. It has been for the past 14 years. But sometimes when it's compounded with work as well, life can take a bit of a backseat. So really by showing the reality of what I feel it takes to be a good dad, hopefully other people can watch this and use it as a way to prepare for the madness. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just playing, it's great. That was a joke by the way. So really over the next three months, I've, I really wanna feel more connected to Elijah and kind of build that foundation of, he can come and tell me anything. You know, I can be firm, I can be strict, I can be, well, not too strict, you don't want them to, you don't want to suppress them. And, you know. So I want to be strict, but I also want him to, to be able to come to me and tell me everything, that kind of thing. And I think at this age is probably the best time to start instilling that kind of information. So ultimately, apart from wanting to instill that foundation between and have a deeper connection between me and Elijah, and also have that better work-life balance, I want this to be almost like, a guide although it's my experience it could there might be some things that might help you along the way if you're a first time dad if you have a little one at home already or if you're just interested in you know planning for the future but whatever it is i want you to be able to take something away from it so i hope you guys can follow me on this journey and also keep me accountable it's up to you now well no it's really up to me but it's still up to you have to you have to keep me in check yeah yeah all right cool Catch you on the next one. Peace. Whipping excursion. I got a pick of that person. In the trap. Whipping that worker. You're not a gangster. You're just an internet version.